Welcome back, friends, to the channel. Today we're going to try to answer the question, do open frame generators really make dirty power? And what does that dirty power look like? So we've got three generators, three champion generators. They're all open frame generators, and none of them are inverter generators. So these are just plain generators. So obviously they make open frame inverter generators. These are not. So I have this 7,000 watt one here this 3000 something 3650 here and i also have i think it's a 1200 watt champion generator in my trailer that i've had for about 15 years so i'm sure that one's not very clean what's interesting about these three generators is only one of them advertises what the total harmonic distortion is and it's actually not advertised it's just listed in the parts it's not mentioned anywhere else in the manual but here the stator and the rotor the stator assembly it says right here has less than 5% THD right there. And it also says less than 5% THD on the rotor. Now, this generator, the smaller one, the manual doesn't say anything about THD in the parts or anywhere, and neither does it in the very small generator in the 1200 watt. So that's interesting. So we'll be able to see, hopefully on the waveforms, what these look like and if we can see any real difference. Now what we'll be using here is this thin receipt. Now this is a super cheap oscilloscope off of Amazon. And this is pretty much the only reason I bought this because I'm not really an electronics nerd. I kind of wish I was, I wish I understood all this better. But basically we're just gonna connect this to shore power, you know, to household 120 volt and just see what it looks like, see what the waveform looks like. And then we're gonna connect it to each generator and see what each waveform looks like and see if we can see a dirty waveform, you know, at idle with no load and then give it a load you know, two or 3,000 watt drain and see if that changes the uh, distortion on the waveform, okay? You're gonna see me do a couple things in this video that you normally wouldn't do. These are, these are not safe practices, okay? Don't do this at home is what I'm saying. So I'm gonna take several precautions, but basically I've made a cord that I can plug my ground in and I can plug in my um, hot lead and we'll be able to see the waveforms, okay? So this is not probably the safest way to do this, but this is the way I'm doing it. I don't recommend this way, so don't kill yourself. Okay, we've got shore power here. This is our lead, or the, we're gonna put it on the common side here. Now, when we plug this in, I want this to be able to stick up and away from me so that I can control. Let's make sure my wires are all straightened out here so I don't knock anything around here. We'll go ahead and turn our meter on here. Okay, so we're gonna plug this in carefully to our shore power. All right, now we're just going to clip this on here. Okay, so you can see the waveform there. It looks pretty good. There's no jaggediness. There's no ugly spikes or notches. And with that, you can see it's a nice cyan waveform. Now let's fire up these generators one at a time and see what they look like. Okay, switch on, power on, fuel's on, choke is on. Let's give it a priming pull or two here. Okay, and in this waveform, the crests and the troughs are sharper. They're not quite as round as the household power, but there's no notches or jagged edges. It looks pretty good. Now, traditionally, this 3650 watts like the easiest to start. Turn the switch on, fuel on, choke on. Give it a few priming pulls here. It's real easy.
Now the sine wave on this generator actually looks pretty good, but it is super sawtoothy, super jagged along there. Now I've run two inverter welders and an inverter plasma cutter on both of these generators and they've done just fine. I wish I could afford a THD meter, but they are super expensive. Well, that was fun. Let's do the generator in the trailer now. Now this is exhausted. This has the exhaust pipe down to the outside. I always leave the doors open. I never stay in here when I run this. I always hold my breath, <laughs> even though exhaust is going to the outside, but let's get this running here. Now, like I said, this thing's probably, it is 15, it's probably 16 years old. I bought it in 2007. So yeah, it's uh, doesn't have a lot of hours on it. So let's see if it starts. It hasn't been started for about a year. But let's uh, get the fuel on here. Put the fuel down. The choke's back here. Turn the choke all the way back to the back on. Turn the switch on. That should be all we have to do. I'll give it a couple priming pulls here. This will just fill the carburetor. Is she gonna start? This generator is 17 years old now that I've done the math and it sat for over a year. The last time I started it was last October. It's late November right now. The gas in this thing's well over a year old and the carburetor may be very gummed up. It may not start. You'll see the mistake I made in a second here. It's on the run. <laughs> I had the choke on the wrong way. The choke is the opposite way on this one. Okay. So here on this 1200 watt generator, you know, the sides of the sine wave don't look too bad, but the peaks and the troughs are just super notchy. And yeah, just as we zoom out and zoom in, that's pretty rough stuff right there. Okay, well, now let's put a load on it. This little heater, this little oil heater is like 1500 watts max. Okay, there's our waveform without any load. Okay, let's put this heater, 1500 watt heater on low. Gonna put it on medium. The load kind of smooths the power spikes out, doesn't it? And uh, it's only a 1200 watt generator and this is a 1500 watt heater so I'm not going to put it on high but it does change the waveform just a little bit we're going to go from medium back down to low and now we're going to go to off all right so we got some more testing to do because I realized that we had tested looked at the waveform on the big generator the medium generator and the small generator and then we put the load on the small generator so let's put the load on the medium generator and let's put the load on the bigger generator and just see if that changes the waveform much the loads we're going to use is this at full 1500 watts and this little light right here is two 250 watt bulbs so that's 500 watts so we're going to plug in both these for about 2000 watts and just see how both of them respond and see what the waveforms look like okay here come the lights Here comes the heater, low, medium, and high. I'm going to turn the heater off now and unplug the lights. Okay, 
Let's plug the lights in. Now we'll turn the heater on. Low. Medium. High. Okay, well, what does that mean? You know, this thing makes pretty... Oh, don't forget to turn your switches off when you're done. Probably didn't turn this one off either. So, you know, this one makes pretty clean power. Is it as clean as the shore power, as the household power? It's not squeaky clean like that, but I feel pretty comfortable about running this generator, you know, with our sensitive dishwasher, maybe the refrigerator, obviously, maybe even the washer and dryer that have sensitive electronics in them. I think that's going to I think that's going to do the job. I feel pretty comfortable about that. I've run our house on this generator before, another house, and we didn't have any problems with our electronics or any of our equipment, so I feel good about that waveform. This waveform's a little bit jaggedy. I mean, it's almost sawtooth. You know, it's not uh it's not terrible, but there is some distortion there for sure. And this little generator in here, you know, has it's pretty smooth in between, but there's some big spikes in there uh, that are kind of worrisome. I don't know. Is that a problem? I'm not an electronics nerd. I've never fried any electronics from a generator, but I've never run a generator. I've never run my house on a generator, you know, with this much uh, distortion. <clears throat> We've always just used this generator. This generator is advertised as less than 5% THD, which is pretty awesome. So what do you guys think out there? I mean, have you ever had problems? That's what I want to know. Please comment down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say.